so good to see each of you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Going into this Thanksgiving season. My, what a blessed time. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 Good to have Chris and Jen and the kiddos. Love these grandkids. Amen. Yes. Precious. Amen. Why don't we stand? Let's just invite the presence of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I pray for Sister Cindy. She was going to try to make it. I haven't talked to her this morning. But uh, let's pray for her. Brother Nick's having a pretty serious procedure Tuesday, I believe. So let's hold him up with prayer. Continue to pray, pray, please, for the healing of all those that are troubled in the church. And let's pray for Holy Ghost revival. Yes. Yes. We need a breath of God to blow yes. us fresh again. Amen. 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 If you got a need, why don't you let it be known by raising your hand today? Amen. God oh, sees yes. every need, every heart. Oh, yes. He knows the need today. Amen. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today, and we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for what you've done and for what you're doing, Lord, for what you're going to do. Lord, help us to know you better than we've ever known you before, Lord. Oh, God, to serve you more faithfully than we've ever known you before, Lord. You're worthy, Lord, and you're wonderful. Oh, God, I know all things, Lord. Thank you for saving us, Lord. For continuing to sanctify our hearts and lives, Lord, for your glory. Lord, that we may see you, God, in us. Help us, Lord, acknowledge you. Help us, Lord, be glad. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we praise you, Lord. Church, 
But uh, Friday night, the 11th, Brother Thomas ministered a message, and, and he brought out quite a bit on holiness and wholeheartedness toward God. Very good. And then he preached also Sunday morning, the 13th, uh, on uh, the, the enemies we face in the church. And he brought out the three main enemies that we hardly ever think about. You know, we think about the devil. We think about, uh, you know what I mean, the flesh in certain areas. But he brought out the three main things that we face that we need to be aware of in the church is laziness, selfishness, and blindness. And he really preached with a tear and with a verb. Amen. I mean, he's getting up in his latter years. He don't know how many more times he's going to have the honor Amen to minister. And did you know when uh, uh, Brother Daniel and them, that family that went up, uh, Brother Efren and them uh, went up, there was a lady in the church there that, that helped interpret for them. And uh, they, they've started a new uh, Spanish ministry there. Oh, and he told her, he apologized for there not being anybody uh, that, there that Sunday or maybe the week before, I don't remember. But he said, if we'll go out, and knock on doors. He said, that'll never have to happen again. Amen. And uh, uh, he told about a time when he started a church in Aurora. And he started it in Sister Buckner's house. Yeah. And uh, for the first two months or so, every time they had church, every single service, every time they got together, they had more people than they had ever had in the preceding service. Until they got in their big building and he didn't go in to elaborate and do kudos or nothing, but he talks about if we'll get out and endeavor to tell people oh, yes. about Jesus, yes. tell people, realizing that they're lost, and there's a hell to shun, and there's a heaven to gain. Amen. I repented. Definitely, I felt most guilty, and I asked the Lord to forgive me for not having more of a tear when I minister, and, and for not praying more, and living more dedicated. And I wanted to just kind of open in prayer uh, of scripture here. Colossians 3 and 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, in other words, kill, beat, destroy the flesh. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. In other words, some of us, we realize that we used to be in this former group that he mentioned. Right. But we were right. We're not there anymore. Yeah. But even we, where we're at, we need to oh, be yes. careful that we're not guilty of, of anger and wrath and malice and, and uh, uh Whatever covetousness and right. filthy communication, lie not one to another. Speak truthful one to another. Be never be deceitful, but be honest in your heart toward God, yes, toward man, and right. toward your own self. Amen. Oh, yes. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen. 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 We serve a wonderful risen Savior. Oh, yes. I serve Amen. a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever man may say. The hope of all who seek him and the help of all who find him. None other is so lovely, so pure and kind. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. And he needs to be living for the world to see. And you and I. And that's not going to happen if we're holding on to feelings, re-examining why we're doing what we're doing amongst ourselves. But if we'll worship God together, if we'll take this from God and not from man, 
God will draw us nearer to Him, yes, and we will be touched with others' infirmities. Amen. 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 Isn't that good? Praise I just God. felt like I wanted to Praise share God. that, like maybe the Lord wanted me to share it, or I wanted to share it. I didn't know. But anyway, I want God's will to be accomplished today. Don't you? Amen. 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 All right. I'm going to ask Sister Hannah and uh, to come and sing. And Sister Linda, why don't we sing that chorus again a couple of more times? Amen. More than ever before.
Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Glad to be with God's people. Yes. Thankful for his presence. Yes. And uh, just so thankful to know that, that he lives, that he has, he, that he already overcome. Just singing that oh, song. I was yes. thinking, I was reading this morning there in 2 Kings chapter 16, where the king of, of Syria and the king of Israel came against King Ahaz, yes. there of Judah. The Bible says, but they could not overcome him. <laughs> but I'm thankful today that it's despite how the enemy comes against the people of God, despite whatever, Brother Alvin, that we face today, I'm thankful they can't overcome the people of God. Because greater is he that is in me and he that is in the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. I'm thankful today for Jesus. I'm thankful that He already overcame on the cross. I'm thankful by His blood that we can overcome still today. I love Him today. I'm thankful for victory. I'm thankful for all that He does. I'm trusting Him today to help us and move in our lives. Thank the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the sweet, sweet presence of the Lord. Thank God for the liberty of the Holy Ghost. And I want you to know if you don't know Him, Today is a good day to get to know Him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But if you begin to distance yourself from Him, uh, today's a good day to just cry again. Lord, yeah. here I am. Help us, yes. yes. Lord. Oh, Change me. Yeah. Help me to be what you want me to be. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Love and appreciate each one of you. And I know the Lord has good things for us today. All right. We're going to come to you this morning for the Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Thank you for you being faithful and giving to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the world reminds us to rejoice, for you have overcome the world. Oh, and we thank you, Lord, that we rejoice today in giving. We bless our hearts to give today. We are cheerful hearts, Lord. We are blessed to give and to give we pray you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
let me tell you, I don't know where you're at today, uh, what you're struggling with, but uh, I do want you to know that God knows uh, your type of feelings in your heart towards somebody. I admonish you to listen to the word today. Get it prayed through. Oh, yes. Get it prayed through. Let oh, God make yes. you an overcomer all the way to the end to where you can be the blessed for the body of Christ. See, God reads and discerns the heart. Yes, he does. From top to bottom. Amen. Yes, he does. And, uh, <coughs> we don't win when we say, well, preacher, you're just off base and you're missing the Lord. We don't win. Listen, we don't win when we think we don't have a problem. When the shepherd of the flock says there's a problem. You need to be examined and saying, Lord, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Judas is scared, waited too late. And I'm telling you, I believe with all of my heart he had the goods. I believe he was one of them. But he let something distract us. And just don't be distracted. Jesus is coming. And we are definitely, definitely fighting a foe. It's oh, already right. been overcome if we'll let God be yeah. our victor today. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Pray for Sister Belinda. Sorry about putting her on the spot, but I just felt like I needed to do that today. Amen. Amen.
God is just trying to get our attention. Yes, He is. That's what He's doing. He's wanting right. to help us today. He's wanting to right. minister to us. And He's wanting us to show ourselves, amen, as we really are to Him, realizing that when we're weak, the Bible says that He is strong. Right. Amen. If we'll realize we can do nothing apart from Him, oh, but right. if we'll let Him do what He wants to do in yes. us, He will oh, yes. do what He wants to do through us. Hallelujah. Amen. For His glory, that's what it's all about, is that He may be glorified. Yes, this amen. two days, He'll revive us. And the third day, amen, He will raise us up. This is a picture, I believe, of the cross and the price that Jesus paid. And He said, then yes. shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, oh, that word, Lord. then shall we know, amen, we'll know the Lord if we run after Him. Yes. If we observe Him, amen. Right. If we pursue Him with all of our heart, amen. If we uh, chase after Him, oh, yes. if we go toward Him and not away from Him, right. amen. Then shall we know if we follow on to know, we will recognize Him more and more and more as we love Him. Yes. Amen. As we see Him, to oh, see yes. Him is to love Him, amen. Yes. Then we know in order to follow. We follow in order to know. Amen. Then when we seek Him. Amen. Amen. When we come after the Lord with all of our heart. Amen. That's when we're going to find the Lord. Right. We're not finding the Lord as long as we're comfortable, as long as somebody, Sister Jordan, I believe, testified that God owes us something. God oh, really no, doesn't no. owe us anything. No, Amen. If we got what God owed us, we'd get hell and retribution for right. sure. Sin and iniquity is what we were, and that's what we uh, were owed. Amen. Because right. really we didn't amount to much. Come but you know, America's Amen. never really seen uh, a war on our shores other than uh, like, like, like the Civil War, you know what I'm saying? And then we saw the, the Twin Towers a little bit there and, and people repent, people pray for a few weeks, a few days. Amen. Yeah. Then they forget. They get away from it. But everyone that wants to, uh, to let God do something in their life. Oh, help me preach today. Oh, oh, I got a message that will burn and it may not help you, but it will help somebody. Yes, amen. Oh, and help those that don't know him. Hallelujah. To know him better. Oh, yes. Amen. And it's your responsibility as oh, a yes. servant of the Most High God. Amen. To help us preach. Amen. Help us preach. Amen. Don't ever be offended at the preacher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't matter if you're way above him. Don't, don't be above him. Humble yourself and God will show you something through the donkey. Yes. God will do it, brother, if you'll let him. But if you don't let him, everybody might lose. And we don't want anybody to lose today. You know, we get involved, amen, when things are going wrong. Sister Angela, whenever there's a little Jessica in a well, brother, I want you to know America can bind hands and bind pocketbooks. And we can send help to get her out of the well. Brother, we don't know where she's at today. I mean, some might, but I don't. But we sent much money to her to help her people all over the land did. But today there's countless people that are struggling. They're struggling for their very souls. Right. They're struggling, brother, because they're in a destruction. Amen. That's going yes. to be an eternal destruction right. if God don't somehow see them and help them out. And you and I are oblivious to it. Amen. Sin is working its worst in their behalf. And you and I might cross and rub elbows with them and not even be aware of the trouble that they're in. Because we're not kin to them. Because they're not our relative. Because they're not our son or our daughter or our family member. But I'm telling you, God wants the church to get involved yes. in the affairs of men, to get involved. Amen. We're in the world, and we know we're not of the world, but we need to do what we can to be a bomb and a, and a sad to yes. the world. Hallelujah. Amen. We do that by us yielding to God and by us letting God change us. Oh, yes. Amen. From Amen. what we are. You see, we're not usually what we think we are. We usually think we're better than what we really are. Yeah. But if we'll let God change us from what we think we are, right. amen, and show us what we really are, right. and then somehow see the love of God. I read this week, oh. and I don't remember exactly uh, where or when, but I read about a man that, that was uh, there ministering, and uh, I hope I don't get the story mixed up. He was there ministering, and there was a, a, a man that was doing wicked deeds, doing wicked deeds right in the midst there. And he was defying God. 
And he was all around him. And this man looked at this the, uh, young person and uh, uh, pretty well made fun of this young person standing for God. And that's all I am today is I'm just a not so young person standing for God, trying to glorify God, oh, yes. trying to be a blessing, trying to use yeah. what God has given me. I'm, a good of the kingdom. I'm not trying to be some big eye. And look at little you, brother, I'm trying to help some soul get to heaven. I'm just going to do that by being thoroughly right with God, by being sensitive to what you feel. God is wanting you to do. That's what the motive is today. It's all about Him. Yes. He was decreasing. I must be there are souls here that need God. That should be the focus today. Yes, amen. It's for me to see my need of God. And that everyone would see their need of God. And that we all might be drawn closer to the Lord. It's time for us to follow on to know the Lord. Yes, amen. amen. As we might have known Him in the past. Or even greater. As we might have never known Him before. Or even greater. Amen. Daily when we open the Word. That we might see something. Amen. That Sister Jordan spoke about. That I've never seen that that yes, way before. Amen. Why? Because it brings strength to our soul. Hallelujah. Amen. And courage to our being in God. Hallelujah. But how do we do that preacher? How do I be that pastor today? It may start small, just simply an extra prayer when you don't feel like praying. Amen. Being faithful to God's house. Giving sacrificially of yourself to God. Amen. Realizing that America's in trouble. Amen. America wasn't bought with a cheap price. Brother, but young soldiers gave their price. We just... Uh, 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 Worship the Lord through Veterans Day. And we acknowledged and recognized our veterans. And yeah. thank God for the price they paid. Yeah. But brother, I'm telling you, there's a lot of them that are there, brother, in Washington. And they're never coming out, brother. I mean, right. until glory, until God calls them out. They're not coming out. I read about a man, Thomas Payne. I didn't finish the story yet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, there was a there was a soldier or man or something, and he was there, and and he went, and there was a little boy that come up to him while he was there in that crowd, and uh, that soldier didn't know what to do when that man was blaspheming and saying all those things. I opened a book about illustrations today or yesterday, and uh, that's probably where I read it. But anyway, he was there, and uh, he didn't know exactly what to say or do, so he just kind of began to walk away and was talking to the Lord, and the man called him back and, and blatantly made fun of him face to face there. And he said, you know, uh, this man uh, just renounced God. And he said, you know, he said, uh, uh, when I was walking this way, he said, there was a, a young boy uh, talking, if I remember right, don't quote me on that, it seems like he may have been 11 years old or something, but he was there, and he said, he come on, I said, come on, let's fight, let's fight, you want to fight me, don't you, you want to fight me, don't you, and he said, no doubt I could have whooped the young boy, I mean, you know, outside of a pistol or karate or something, I guess he was talking about, but he said, I didn't do anything except, why did I not want to fight the guy? Because I wanted to love him. I wanted to wash his dirty face. I wanted to put some clean All clothes right. on him and All give right. him a way of hope. Let him see that All this right. this grungy old thing he's going through in life is not all there is. And he said, therefore, he said, God's not going to strike you dead. Because that's what it was. He said, if you're God and you're real, strike me dead. I believe it was. And he said, God's not wanting to strike you dead. No. He's wanting to wash your face. He's wanting to clean you up. He wants to put new shoes on your feet. He wants to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life and make you a way where you seem to see no way from your life that you may glorify Him. You see, the world may want to destroy us, but God and God's people don't want to destroy us. God's people, when we're praying through, we don't make fun, make fun of people's abilities or inabilities. But we struggle. I read about it and I wrote this one down. Thomas Paine lived in the 17 and 1800s. He was making fun of God and there was before a crowd there of over 5,000 people. When a 17-year-old girl stood up and began to sing, she said, stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. 
Lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. And then at about that time, the second balcony began to stand up and sing. And then the third balcony began to stand up and sing. And then the main mezzanine or floor, whatever you call it, began to stand up and sing. And they began to look around trying to find a man, Thomas Payne. And where was it? They said he slipped out quietly the back door or the side door. Why? Brother, whenever the devil, you begin to confront the devil, you begin to stand. Stand up and defy hey, the winds of hell as they come against you. You'll realize the battle's not yours. You're the God. And it's already been falling one. We better make sure we're on the winning side. Yes, amen. We better make sure we're fighting the person that's against God. Amen. For God and not just so we'll have a better life. Hallelujah. I cry and I pray in this service, Lord. In your wrath, if wrath must come, remember mercy. God, remember mercy. Some have suffered unduly, unnecessarily, because we refuse to hear God. We refuse to yield to God. God, help us. We don't want to see the devil just in our presence comfortably. We want him to sneak out the back door or the side door. It's time for us to follow on to know the Lord, to realize that we're in a battle. And we're in a battle for our souls. We're in a battle for our lives. We're in a battle for our families and our loved ones and our friends. We're in the battle of some that may be here in this service today in Acts 17, 27, that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. You see, there are different meanings of the word know there and understandings of the word know. One you can do, you can know of someone. Like I know George Washington, but I never met him. I really don't know him. I've never touched him. You can know someone a little better than that. Amen. I know the President of the United States. He lives today, but I've never touched him. I've never spoken to him. I never know him. I pray for him, but it doesn't seem like the prayers have accomplished a great deal. But I do want you to know there's a God in heaven that heard the motive of my prayer. And he heard the heartbeat of my soul. And if I'll follow on to know the Lord, if I'll do what I know to do rightly and correctly, God is going to do what only God can do. And then thirdly, you can intimately know someone. You know, I know my wife and I knew her. Amen. That year that we courted, but I didn't know her. But brother, I'm telling you what, after our wedding, I knew her. But even then, I didn't know her. There was things about her that I didn't know. But year after year, month after month, day after day, I've seen and I've acquired more knowledge and more fellowship and more communion and love. And today I remember a preacher preaching. It was uh, Brother Johnson, I believe is who it was. He was a preacher about the kids. And he was talking about the kiss of that newly married couple that's so precious and so sweet and so intimate. Then he went on to talk about the kiss that is compared in Scripture to the kiss of a dog. It's like a dog coming up and licking your hand and loving you. You know, you say there, there's nothing, no, no pet hardly that's as loyal as a dog to its owner. But he said, brother, you compare a person that's been married 40, 50, 60 years mm-hmm. They've seen the trials, the hardships, the struggles of each other, of life. And they've held hand in hand and arm in arm. And they've wept together and they've laughed and they've cried together. He said they kiss one another. He said it may just barely be a kiss on the lips. It may be a kiss on the cheek or the forehead or somewhere. But he said that's a kiss that only can be intimate with them. Brother, it's special that everybody can experience. I remember the book that tells about the, you've only got one kiss. You've only got one first kiss. You've only got one uh, uh, time of giving away your virginity. You need to make sure you do everything you can to be pure before God, to do it right. Amen. We need to be intimate with the Lord. I don't need to just be satisfied with God being over there. I don't need to just be satisfied with Sister Angela or or Brother Andrew or somebody having a good relationship with the Lord. Brother, I need to get to know Him. I need to follow up to know Him. It's easy when you pray and heaven comes down. But it's hard when you pray and heaven's brass, brother, and the devil's so thick it seems like you can fight the opposition with a knife, brother. What do you do? You pray. 
pray anyway. Yes, keep praying. You live faithful. You live victorious for God. Why? Because He's worthy. That's right. He's worthy. Yes, Amen. He's worthy. See, the devil seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I'm come that you might have life. Let's look first of all that this no that we talk about is just really kind of no of. Why is it important for us to know the Lord? You know, because like I said earlier, eternity depends upon it. In Acts, right. the third chapter of the lame beggar, that was healed. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. And a certain lame man from his mother's womb was there. And, and he seeing Peter and John or, or whatever, asked alms. And they said, silver and gold, have I none? But such as I have, give I thee. And they began to pray for him. And God raised him up. And he began to go leaping and joying and rejoicing. Right. And brother I'm telling you, they wanted to know who done that and by what power had he done that. Yeah. And he said, by the power of the one that you killed. Amen. This is the one. And I want that through ignorance you did it. He said, but it's time now everywhere. Amen. For you to repent. Repent ye therefore and be forgiven. Be forgiven that your sin be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come. Oh, yes. Why is it so important? That we know the Lord. Because there's none other, other name given among men. Right. Whereby we must be saved than a man, Christ Jesus. That name. That precious name. Yes, amen. The devil don't want you to know that Lord. That's right. Be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified. Whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. And God's looking for a different whole. Amen. In them, if this is a whole, I believe, like Sister Jordan was talking about, he was restored, he was whole, right. he was healed. But I'm telling you, I want you to look at he was heaven bound. Yes, amen. He was heaven bound. Some just knew of him. Do you just know of the Lord? You know who your companion worships. You know who they endeavor to be faithful to. Uh, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, what? whereby we must be saved. Right. We must be saved. That's why all hell begins to attack yes. when we come together to preach. That's why yes. the devil makes it hard sometimes. Because the devil don't want this one that's out and about, amen, to see and the revelation come to them. And they'll begin to know them, not just in a name, not just through somebody else's experience with him. But they begin to feel after him. They begin to hunger for more of him. They want to feel him. They want to love him. Yes. They want to be faithful to him. We know that, brother, writing your name on a church books won't get you to heaven. Right. Amen. Taking communion won't get you to heaven. Coming to church and putting in an offering won't get you to heaven. Yes. Brother, but I'm telling you, there's none other name given among men except the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. That's how we won't get to heaven. Amen. We're going to come as a sinner just as I am without one plea. But that thou blood was shed for me. And that thou beast me come to thee, O Lamb of God. I come. That's what I did. And that's what you did to get saved. And that's what every man, woman, boy, and girl must do. Yes. If they're going to be heaven ready, they're going to have to come to God. That's right. Realizing they're a sinner. Amen. And they're going to have to say, God, forgive me of my sins, and they're going to have to believe that God has the power to forgive them of their sins, that he died on the cross to pay their debt. And as a sinner, they're repentant, and they're sorry, and they're going to turn away to the best of their ability, never to sin again. And I want you to know if something happens, there's a regeneration that takes place in oh, yes. hearts, and God changes their want-tos. Has God yes. done that to you today? Has God changed your want-tos in the past days, weeks, months, years? 
Have you come to God as a sinner and said, God, please be merciful unto me, a sinner? Amen. I've heard of people that, that curse God coming to God. I've heard of people that did all kind of wicked, vile, evil things that God in His mercy yes. saved them. Brother, I'm yes. telling you, I was in a state to where I was not worthy of saving, but God saved me anyway. Yeah. You were probably yeah. in a state, some of you, that you were not worthy of saving, but God saved you anyway. God don't want you to just know Him enough to be a Savior that took place 5, 10, 15 years ago, no. but God wants you to know Him better today. Yes. Amen. God wants you to look at him and get to know him pretty well. See him so that you might see his love as you've never seen it before. Oh, so yes. his word might be revealed to you like you've never seen it before. Hallelujah. Amen. So in your prayer life, when you bow down and you cry holy, amen, you begin oh, to get a, a sin of God's glory and his touch. Brother, you just don't want to let him go. You fell for him. You saw him through the lattice. But now you've got a hold of him and you don't ever want to lose him again. Hallelujah. It's one thing for me to pray as I listen to a message that Brother Thomas preaches. Amen. And I say, God, forgive me for not praying with a compassion and a tear. Yes. But it's another thing for me not to do anything necessary to bring about the change yeah. and bring about the tear. Yeah. And I'm telling you, some of us, without realizing it, our body language oh. speaks and it says things. Don't question. Don't doubt. Bye. Don't be discouraged where God sent you. He oh, sent you. Hallelujah. Rejoice. You can still continue to grow. Yes. You may have to pray for me for God to bring me up a notch or two. You may have to pray for me for God to bring me revival. But if you'll pray for God to bring me revival, in it we'll all be blessed together. That's right. We need to pray and labor together. Amen. In Matthew 3, or I'm sorry, Matthew 13 and 3, says, And he spake many things unto them a parable, saying, Behold, the sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. And some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith, or forthwith they sprung up, but because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, and others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some hundredfold, and some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who had ears to hear? Let him hear. Oh, yes. God is doing something in our lives today if we will let him. Right. God is tenderizing our hearts. God is helping us if we follow on to know. There's different meanings and understandings to the word know. Yeah. What do you know about God today? Are you going to be satisfied with the knowledge that you've got about God? Oh my. I praise the Lord for these that continue to come. I praise the Lord for you that are hungry and thirsty after righteousness. I praise the Lord for you that want to follow on to know the Lord unto God's holiness and faithfulness. I praise the Lord for you that pray for one another at church and you don't just love them, amen, amen but you want to help them. Amen. In other words, you don't just love them in word, but you love them in deed. Oh my. Some of you hardly ever come by, but what you don't have something to give, something to share, something to be a blessing with. Amen. God wants you to know him. God wants you to feel after him. God wants you to put forth an effort to seek for him, to search for him, to feel after him, to wait. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. Wait upon the Lord till you be undue with power from on high. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. Not just know as someone you've heard of. Not just know as someone that is around in your day or hour. But know as someone that you know very well. And he's been a friend to you. And he's never felt it. Did you know something I was thinking about uh, either this week or last week? And People don't realize it. But did you know many people are hurt? By other people. Other people that disappoint and grieve the heart of God. Other people that do things wrong. Right. That say things wrong. That act in a way they shouldn't act perhaps. But people without realizing it. They, without meaning to it. They will turn their back against God. Yeah. And the one that has never done them anything but good. You're yeah. right. The one that has never harmed them. The 
the one that has never hurt them, the one that has always loved them, the one that went to Calvary for them. Yes. Because some mistake that some fleshly, sinner, carnal person made, they will get hurt at God. Yep, amen. And they'll turn their back against God. And they're hurt. The hand that desires to feed them. Right. The hand that loves them. The hand right. that wants to comfort them. And minister to them. We oh, talk yes. to you. Amen. Maybe it was Brother Thomas ministered about the, uh, the, the priest and the Levite and the Samaritan. And the priest and the Levite. Looked at the person that had been beaten and robbed and left naked for dead. And they, the priest went over on the other side and the Levite went over on the other side. But this stranger, this Samaritan, yeah. amen, brought him and put him on his own horse or mule or whatever it was and carried him to an inn yes. and took care of him. Right. You mothers know what it is to care for a sick, wounded child all night to lose right. sleep. I was talking to Chris. They worked. Friday went about their full day of business and doing all they did and then when they got off work they loaded the car and headed and drove all night long and got in here about noon yesterday. I'm talking about it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to do things like that. But we do things like that because we love people. Because we care about people. There's a lot of people that loves you. Even though I, I started yesterday to go visit some people. And I said, oh God, you know my heart. You know, I don't want to just, when I was in Montrose, we went and there was some people that I probably, literally, I probably visited them 40 or 45 times a year. Amen. The first year or two, I was trying to get them to come to church. That's a lot. Yeah. Some of them eight or ten miles away. That's a lot. Why did I do it? Because I cared. I showed them that I loved them and I cared. They said, well, preacher, you never visit me. Well, I'm telling you what, I'll be happy to. I'll be happy to. Yes. But I want you to know it's a different day and hour and a different way to minister today. I just want to figure out what does God want me to do to minister to you. Oh, yeah. yes. Each one of you. I'm reaching. Yes. I'm trying. I'm doing all I know to do. See, there's a spirit that would come on a person if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. That would cause you not to want to be ministered to. Not like you. Somebody else, yes. Man, I'll shout, I'll amen, I'll get happy, we'll do the boogie, we'll get together spiritually. <laughs> not you. Yeah, I want you to know you is the one that has prayed and sought God for this service today. That's right. Come on. You. Me. Come on. And I need you to band together. I need oh, you not to scrutinize yes. me. Amen. Do your students scrutinize you? You don't help them very much. No. While they're scrutinizing, you're not ministering to them because they're not focusing with the right focus. You're right. right. I'm telling you, you can tell when your kids are upset with you, parents. You can tell. Yeah. I can see a lot clearer up here than you think I can sometimes. I wish I could uh -huh. decipher and dissect it and know just exactly how to minister in it. I don't always know. I do know I can pray. Oh, yes. I can pray. I can pray. But I need you to pray with me. Yeah, because yeah. the Bible says where there's envy and strife, there's confusion in every evil work. You don't see miracles where that junk's going on. No. You don't see the anointed hoopla of the Holy Ghost going on. No. Why? Because God said he wasn't going to do it. You're right. But if we'll get in one mind and one accord in spirit and in truth. Yes. You'll pray for my weaknesses, and I'll pray for your weaknesses. Then when a sinner comes through the door, we can band together, and you can forget my weaknesses, and I can forget your weaknesses, and we can be what God wants us to be well, yes. everybody as a whole. Yes, amen. And God will use us to be the lamplight to the community. I know there's a lot of people that you listen to. Be careful, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you read. Be careful. You say, well, I wouldn't go here or there for information. Let me tell you, uh, we love you and we want to help you. Hallelujah. You know, this points today for us to realize that we're going to see him if we serve him and yield to him. Amen. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Dare to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift his voice. Cares all past home at last, ever to rejoice.
Let me say to you, church, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against one another. Right. Amen. But we wrestle against principalities yes. and powers yes. and spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. And why do we wrestle more at times than others? We wrestle more at times when God is wanting to do a work. Amen. And the devil is seeking to hinder That's right. and distract. Yes. You see, we want to help people. We want to help people see the love of God. I, I, uh, I remember when God saved me. God was moving. God's anointing was so real and powerful. And it wasn't until... God made me really, really afraid that he got my attention. And I pray that you will listen to God. You know, when I when I was hungry for God, I said, Lord, don't let me don't let me die in this state. And a lot of people said, You had no right to pray. No, I didn't have a right to pray. But I prayed anyway. Because at that moment, somehow through the grace of God and the love of the Holy Ghost, amen, working in me, he made me aware that I was a sinner. Right. And I said, God, help me. Be merciful to me. And God didn't do it that minute, but God worked. And if you'll let God, he will work in your life. And amen. his spirit yes. will draw you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you can see him clearer than you see him today. And realize that when you come to God, it's going to take an act of faith on your part for you to surrender. God's not going to lay out a, a, a silver platter or the red carpet and, and say everything's going to be easy and smooth sailing from then on. Yeah, right. But if you'll trust Jesus and come just as you are, God will have mercy upon you and he'll help you. God. And he'll Praise save God. you. Amen. And he'll make the changes in due season, in due time in your life that you can Hallelujah. yield to and you can adjust with. Hallelujah. And every one of them will be good for His glory and for your best interest. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you stand this morning? Church, I tell you, I really do believe we're, we don't realize how close how close the time is to the end. It's close to the end. You know, there's there's people that that the enemy is trying to to distract and people that he's trying to get them to lose interest and people yeah. that he's trying I'm not talking about just our church I'm talking about church after church after church after church yes. but if we will pray for one another and hold one another up we don't have to lose any That's right. amen we don't Hallelujah. have to lose any we can gain oh, yes. those that are lost into the harvest of the righteous amen yes. amen amen, amen. Is there anybody here today that you need special prayer? You say, Pastor, would you pray for me that God will just have his way in my heart and life? I, you know, if, if I were to die today, I don't know if I'd go to heaven or not. And if you've been coming weeks and months and years, this is not you. You, you should know that. You should have settled that. But if you're here today and you've not surrendered yet to the Lord to save you, God wants to make a change in you. Amen. Right. And it starts with you yielding oh, yes. and saying, pray for me. Yes. I'm not going to call yes. you out. I'm not going to make a spectacle out of you. But I will pray for you. But a good step for you. Amen. Nobody's really looking around and paying any attention. But you could say, preacher, would you pray for me? Oh, yes. Would you pray for me that I would get hungry for truth? Yes. That I would get hungry for you, Lord. That I would yield to you and see my need for you. I'm telling you, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the other of are the ways of death. Not every man that says, Lord, Lord, is going to heaven. But it's he that's doing the will of God. Father, you see each heart here today. You saw the hand that went up. You see what it represents today. I pray today, Lord, that you would help and you would heal and you would undergird, Lord, as only you can do. We need you, Lord. I pray that you would help all of us, Lord, in the good times and in the times that's a struggle. Help us to follow on to know you more clearly. And, Lord, let you become more dear to us, Lord. 
than we ever dreamed possible. Give us a greater love for you, Lord, than we've ever had before. Please, Lord, in your wrath, remember mercy in dealing with us. Love us and help us and continue to draw us to you, Lord, I pray. Please minister to your church. Use us, Lord. Please help us. In Jesus' precious name, I pray, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't we come? It's about 10 or 11 minutes to 12. We've got time to pray. Let's just get shut in with the Lord and let God minister to you today. Whatever your need is, bring it to Jesus. And let God help us today. Amen. Hallelujah.